Hold E to grab all items on the ground. Press X to bring up the build menu. You can move items without having to break them down. And if you don't need something, you can also destroy it to get the full quantity back. You can also move chests that have stuff in them and the game will remember what was in the chest. Another important thing to note is you can move an item and then travel to respite and it will bring those items with you. Good for traveling back to your realm after gathering a bunch of materials. This only works when you're doing travel to respite. If you go through a portal, it will not work. If you ever get downed and you have an NPC, you should just wait because you will get revived as long as your NPC is still alive. If you break your leg and you have a sprain from falling from a high distance, you can consume a healing salve to get rid of the status effect. You can use the guidebook and the journal in particular to look up all the steps for a quest and it will highlight exactly what you need and where they drop from. You can also look up the traders and look at exactly where each trader is located and if you open their shop it will show you what items you can purchase. This allows you to look through all the traders available in the game and exactly where to find them. You can bypass the build limit of 300 structures by building foundations at a different level. This foundation structure has a build limit of 125 out of 300 whereas this has a build limit of 220 out of 300. You can use enhancements to provide various bonuses to your tools and weapons. For example, this enhancement provides fire damage to my weapon when imbued and it burns the target on contact. As you can see, the wolf is burning and it died to fire damage. Other enhancements, for example, the one on my pickaxe allows me to one shot any ore node and gather all the materials at once. Do not sleep on enhancements, they're very useful. The Arborist's shield gives you a bunch of resistances. Hermetic flame coats your tool in flames and then you can do burn damage. Recovery allows you to briefly regenerate HP and Summon Swarm allows you to summon a swarm of bees to do damage. These aren't all the enhancements, you can actually scroll all the way down and there's a couple more that you unlock. Oberon's Bounty is one of my favorites, you can use this to one shot any node whether it's an ore or a wood node, depending on the tool you use it on. Regrowth basically allows you to respawn all the trees and twigs and plant fiber. And another one that's really useful is Track Legend. It basically summons these um, guiding lights that lead you towards things like the Elder Eoton Spirit or the Sun Giant. Activate the Might card at a Realmic Transmuter before you go fishing. As you can see, it is extremely effective and you'll be swimming in fishes in no time. These puzzles, you do not have to come up to them and interact with the mechanism. You can also activate it by throwing something at it from a distance. For example, this torch or shooting it from a distance. Anytime you mess this up, it will spawn a turn of creatures, which you can then take down for their parts. This creature, for example, dropped the ingot Lacunus. Here's the ingot Lacunus. It gives you melee damage, fire resistance, and durability. Now again, I can simply mess this up again. Again, you don't have to interact with these pieces. You can throw something at it or shoot it from a distance. And it got triggered and it respawns more enemies, which I can farm for more items. When using a minor realm card at a realm make transmuter, make sure you scroll down at the bottom and see exactly what benefits you get. Currently, I have the Settler Imminent card active and it produces 1.5 times metal items, 1.5 times lumber items, and 1.5 times carved stone items. It also decreases growth rate by 33% up to a maximum of 75%. And then if you use something like a greenhouse card, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that the clothing that you craft will have elements such as weight plus, fire resist plus, stealth plus, rain resist plus. Whereas when using the industry card, you'll notice that when you craft ammunition, you'll get two times the output. And when you craft ingots, you'll get two times the output. Additionally, if you use the query card, tools that you craft will have blocking efficiency plus, critical damage plus, range damage plus, melee damage plus. So for this case, it may be a good idea to play the query card before you craft weapons as you will get increased range damage, increased melee damage, increased critical damage, and increased blocking efficiency. After you loot a chest in the wild, you can break down the chest and gain some valuable materials such as carved wood, gilded lumbar, and hinge. This is a good way to get late game resources early game. You can bypass these doors at some of the sites of power such as the herbarium site of power by using the climbing pickaxe and scaling the side.
As you can see, you can get inside without even needing to open the door. You can toggle from first person to third person and third person to first person using the F5 key and you can use the F4 key to hide the hut. The spyglass is unlocked through an NPC quest and you can use this to scout out the creatures in your realm. You can use this to find things such as the Eotons and the Elder Eotons. This is how to stop the NPC from dumping valuable resources in the campfire. So this is my NPC. I'm going to go ahead and give it one piece of wood. And the NPC is going to come on over and deposit it in the campfire. There we go. Now in order to stop her from doing this, what you can do is you can give your NPC a torch and go ahead and equip that torch. And now if I give it wood, the NPC will not deposit it at all. As you can see, the wood is still in the NPC's inventory. So if you're out mining and you just want your NPC to hold on to your valuable resources, hand them a torch and you're good to go. If you're visiting an Athens trader and you're confused about what exactly the item does, don't forget that there's an additional drop down menu that you can use to look up exactly what the item is, what kind of resources it can produce, and just a bit more information about everything. A lot of times when you go into a public realm that you opens up, you may be able to complete the Fate Tower and when you come back out and you go back in another day the world will have reset and so would have the fate tower so with one portal active as a public realm you can actually run multiple fate towers without having to actually reset the portal and add in new cards now when you're inside a public realm you can go over to the party and socials tab and you can see all the players that are in your realm at the moment i don't have any players in my realm you can go ahead and create a party and invite players and then you can also leave the party pressing the enter key opens up this window here this is your logs window, it tells you what you gathered. But if you click this icon here, it opens up another menu. Now in this menu, you can type forward slash question mark, which gives you all the commands available. So for example, if I type slash who, it tells me all the players that are in this realm at the moment. Now you can invite, which is slash I, and then you put the player's name to invite them to your party. You can do slash party to switch over to the party channel, and then slash leave party to leave the channel, slash mute to mute the chat, unmute you can also do slash party to go into party mode and then you can talk to players um, in party mode so there is a chat function available if you're in a difficult realm or about to enter a fade tower or do something challenging like fighting a boss you can put down a fairy ring so four wood pieces four stone pieces and one synchronous lotus and this will plop down a respawn point for you in that realm it's important to note that you cannot fast travel to the fairy ring and it only serves as a respawn point if you die in that realm it will spawn you back on the fairy ring once you're done utilizing the fairy ring you can use the build menu with the x key and hold v to remove the fairy ring and get all the materials back so that you can use it again in another realm different weapons are effective against different creatures so if i use this blunt mace on this wolf it will only do 66 damage and the numbers are red which means it is not very effective however if i use the skinning knife you can see i can get a critical hit and similarly if i use the hatchet i will also get a critical hit in general slicing damage is good against most bound creatures as well as animals and the maul is more effective against robots such as the automation bishop now suppose you have a ton of items crafting in any workbench or all the workbenches and it's taking a bunch of time what you can do is if it's nighttime in your realm you can come and take a long rest and that will complete all the crafting once you wake up regardless of how much you're crafting how many stations are crafting it once you take that long rest all the crafting benches and the smelters will have everything completed you can press the h key to hide the tools you're holding out you can craft better tools, gears, and weapons by using more advanced materials. So for example, the refined maul, if we use ingots tin and regular lumbar, it gives you melee damage of 120 and strength of 20 with an item level of 41. However, if I use the advanced lackiness ingot along with lumbar U, it gives you an item level of 58 with melee damage 174 and strength 24. As you progress further on, you will unlock weapons. Weapons can be crafted by using different parts and assembling them together. The action, for example, is a piece used when crafting firearms. So, for example, if I was to use an ingot made of tin, 
the firearm would receive the bonuses of 10% durability and 5% critical damage. If I was to use a better material such as the ingot bombardier which drops from the grenader enemies, it would get stats such as 25% range damage and 7.5% critical damage. Now later on, when you unlock the blacksmith's heart, you will be able to craft a refined action. A refined action uses an action and a mechanical gear. So in this instance, if I was to craft my action out of the ingots bombardier and the mechanical gears out of pursuits, which gives durability, critical damage and range damage, I would end up with these two pieces. One has range damage, critical damage and miasma resistance and the other has range damage, critical damage, durability. Now when I go in to craft the refined action, you will notice it takes the range damage from both these pieces and combines them. It takes the critical damage from both the pieces and combines them and it takes the durability from both the pieces and combines them and the miasma resistance from both the pieces and combines them. So instead of having 25% range damage and 7.5% critical damage, I end up with a product that has 50% range damage and 15% critical damage. Cropping 101. Open up the Herbarium card. I chose the Forest Realm and go ahead and set up some plant boxes. Then head over to the Realmic Transmitter and activate the Tempest card. This removes the need for watering your crop plots. After that, make sure you have the Charm of Bounty equipped to one of your gear pieces. I, for instance, have put it on my backpack and they do not seem to stack, so you only need one of them. You can craft this at the Enchanter's table. Once you have your Charm of Bounty, go ahead and harvest. And you can see on the bottom, I am getting anywhere from five to six marigolds. Harvesting all of that yielded me 20 seeds and 37 flowers. The quantity will depend on which type of seeds you use. For example, if you were to use the chamomile flower, you will get way more seeds and way more flowers. To put into perspective, this is what I farmed up in about 3-4 to four harvests. You can also set up a mortar station to go ahead and turn your flowers back into seeds. Instead of manually going in and replanting the seeds, I'm going to go ahead and give all my seeds to my helper. There we go and they should auto plant the seeds in the plant box. It's a good idea to back away a little bit, otherwise the NPC kind of just stands there and looks at you. With the current setup that I have, if you go ahead and inspect the plant box, you'll see there are three traits positively affecting the plant. You can only attain a maximum of 75% growth rate. The herbologist trait gives you 50%, Exposed, which is being out in the open, gives you 25% and that already caps you out at 75%. So you're getting the maximum yield possible. It takes about a minute or maybe two minutes for all the plants to grow back. And I think this is a bug at the moment. So it seems like the rain isn't able to fully fill up the crop plots. All you have to do is sprinkle a little bit of water and the symbol goes away. So usually what I do is as my NPC is planting the seeds, I just go around and water all the plots and they should be all fixed. And then I have a couple rain barrels set up here so I can fill up my canteen and repeat the process. And just like that, within two harvests, we have 65 marigolds. I chose to focus on marigolds because it gives you maximum stamina, ice resist, fire resist, and poison resist. 